Hello again. Uh, today we're going to take a look at similarity. Uh, this is another concept uh, of things that we're going to solve for using proportions. So first let's get our definitions down, then we'll dive right in. Uh, so similar figures. Uh, what it means if figures are similar, it means that they have the same shape, um, but their lengths might have different sides. Uh, sizes. However, all their sides and all their angles are going to correspond. Um, now that we've said that, let's really define what corresponding means. So corresponding angles are angles that are in the same relative position, meaning in the same spot on the two figures, the two figures that look alike. Um, and the measure of them would be uh, the same or congruent. We'll use our fancy word. Corresponding sides mean they're the sides that are in the same relative position. Now these are not going to be congruent but they're going to form a proportion, which means we can solve for unknowns um, in similar figures because we know that their sides are proportional. So make sure that you get all those uh, definitions down. So here, I just wanted to give you an example of what the, um, what congruent uh, figures would look like. So here I have two, or sorry, two um, similar figures. That's what this little uh, sign here means. And over here, sorry, I split off some of this one. I gave you a couple of your symbols here. Um, if we just have this little uh, tilde, this little slash, that means that they're similar. So up here, I'm telling you triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF, which means they have corresponding sides and corresponding angles, which we'll look at. Um, up here, if I have the equal sign with that little um, tilde over it, or squiggly line, it just means is congruent to. So for example, when I'm looking here, and you'll notice that I color coded it here, um, angle A is 30 degrees, angle D is 30 degrees. So they're congruent or the same. So angle A is congruent to angle D. That's, that goes with what we know about similar figures. All of their angles should uh, be the same, or the ones that are in the same spot. So if you look, A is the, the angle on the left, so is D. They're in the same spot. Um, you'll just notice this one has longer sides. So B, uh, angle B is 110, angle E is 110. So they're congruent. B is congruent to E, and they're in the same spot. B is at the top, E is at the top. So they're, those would be the corresponding angles. Uh, finally, if we take a look at C, it's 40 degrees, F is 40 degrees. So C and F are also congruent. They have the same measure. Um, they're corresponding angles. They're both on the um, right of the triangle. So. They're in the same spot that makes them corresponding. Um, the other thing we want to look at is the proportion of our sides. Now, I've given you all of the measures here, so we're not solving for anything here. This is just to set up our idea of similarity. Um, so uh, side AB, we want to look for the corresponding side, which means it's in the same position. So this side here, which I've marked in green, is in the same, not the same, but uh, corresponding to, it's in proportion to, this side over here, DE. So AB corresponds to DE which means I can write these as a proportion. So there's 16 to 4, which reduces to 4 over 1. We're going to reduce all of them um, into their simplest form to show you that all four sides do indeed create the same proportion. Uh, so over here I have side BC, which I've color-coded with the blue, and side EF. They're different measures, but they're in the same spot on the triangle, so they are uh, proportional. So if I write that same way, 12 over 3, starting with my big triangle, that also reduces to 4 over 1, if we're putting it um, into its simplest form. And uh, finally, the last one, just tilt that to make sure you can see the bottom. Um, AC corresponds to DF. They're in the same spot. Um, so again, if we write it as a proportion, 24 over 6, that also simplifies to 4 to 1. So what that means is that um, all of these sides have the same proportion. They all simplify, if we wanted to call it a scale, of a scale of 4 to 1. All right. So similar figures are very similar to what we just talked about when we talked about scale. Um, one is just a scaled down version of the other. Or maybe we're about to talk about scale. All right. So we're going to do um, a couple of examples using similar figures. So the first thing you'll notice is I've told you that ABCD is similar to UTSR. So these are similar figures, um, which means they have corresponding sides and corresponding angles. So we can use these corresponding sides to solve for our unknown, all right? So we saw that all of our sides are reduced to the same thing, so we know that they're proportional. So what that means is if I have an unknown, for example, I don't know the length of TS, I can find it out. How am I going to do that? I'm going to set up my proportion. 
So I know that 6 um, is corresponding to x. So I'm going to write that as a ratio, 6 over x. Now what we want to remember is we want the same things in the same spots. So since I started with my big um, trapezoid, I need to also use the big trapezoid um, to put the first number on my second ratio in my proportion as well. So since I started over here, I'm going to start over here again. Now, the nice thing is, it doesn't matter which size I pick. I could go with the height or I could go with the bottom. I'm just going to go with the bottom side here. On the big one, it's 10 meters. On the little one, it's 8 meters. All right? So I have enough information that I can solve for this unknown side because these two, when reduced, should form the same proportion as these two if I reduce them. So that's why I can set it up this way. The big thing to remember is whatever, uh, whichever way you set up your first ratio, you absolutely have to set the second one up the same way. So always start with the same shape. If you're started with the big one on the first ratio, start with the big one on the second one. I can start with the little one, that's fine. I just have to make sure I set up the second ratio the same way or I'm going to wind up with a crazy answer. All right? Um, so again, from here, it just goes back to solving proportions the way that we have by cross-multiplying. Uh, 8 times 6 gives me 48. 10 times x gives me 10x. So when I divide, I'm going to wind up with 4.8 meters for the top of my, my uh, trapezoid. All right? So that's all we're doing. We're just setting up our proportion. And maybe you set your proportion up differently, you'll still get the same answer. Uh, this is the joy of proportions. As long as you have everything lined up the way it should be, you're going to be fine. For example, I could even do um, uh, the side to side on the big one and side to side on the small one. So if I wanted, I could say 6 to 10 would be the same as x to 8 because they form a proportion. Whatever I start with, I need to make sure I start with on the same one. So it's fine if I do big to big, small to small, as long as I have top to bottom, top to bottom. And what you'll notice is I'm still multiplying the same numbers. I still wind up with 10x is equal to 48, x is equal to 4.8. So if you uh, saw it and you set yours up a little differently, that's fine. You're still going to get the same answer as long as everything is in the spot that it should be. So that's the really important thing to remember, making sure you're putting things in the right spots. Okay. Here you'll notice uh, I told you triangle ABC um, is similar to FHG. However, what you'll notice when you look at them, they're not facing the same way. So one is on its side and one is straight up. So what you need to think about is um, where are my corresponding sides? So what I might do is just either color code or label them. So here's the base right here. Um, I'm going to label the base B. Here's the base on this one. So those are the corresponding sides. We need to make sure that we remember which side corresponds to which, or we're going to wind up getting confused. So here's the base, and here's the base. The other thing I could do is I could take this triangle, and I could redraw it. I could tip it on its side so that it's facing the same way as my other one, and then just tip my letters with it. So this is, and this is something we talked about in sixth grade, basically like I took this figure, and I rotated it. That's all we did. We just did a turn, okay? So we could do that to help um, to help keep it clear, or we can always color code our different sides so we know which side corresponds to which, because then we can make sure that we're setting up our proportion correctly. So I'm going to set it up with a base to a base, and I'm going to start with the little one, just to be different. So I'm going to start with the little one to the big one, which is a 1.5 to 2. I started with the little one, so I need to start with the little one again. My unknown is here, y. Uh, the corresponding side to y is 4. So I'm going to put the big one on the bottom, because I put the big one on the bottom the first time. I started here, and then I went here. So then I started here again, and went over here. You have to make sure you're setting them up properly. Um, from here, we can just go ahead and we can do our cross multiplication. I get 2y is equal to 6. When I divide both sides by 2, I find that y is equal to 3. And that um, little slash mark, that's a, a short way of saying feet. All right. Um, so 3 feet would be the distance of this side here. Okay. 
So that's all we're doing, just setting up our proportions and solving for our unknown. Got a couple more examples here. Oh, just one more example here. <laughs> uh, here you'll notice I have uh, two rectangles. What you'll notice is that, again, um, pay attention to how they're facing because one is on its side and one is facing the opposite way. So I want to make sure that I'm not confused um, as to what I'm uh, solving for. So um, if this is on a worksheet, obviously you can't do this in your book, you can always color code. So the long side, I'm going to color orange. The long side would be the corresponding side here as well. Okay? So I know that those two will form a proportion. So I'm going to write that one, 5 to 15. And then my short sides would also form a proportion. So there's a short side and there's a short side. I don't know what the short side is on my little uh, rectangle. On the big one, it's nine centimeters, okay? So you can always color code or you can make some kind of marks on your paper or you can redraw your rectangle so they're facing the same way so you don't get confused. Because if I got confused and I tried to say that five is proportional to nine, I'm gonna wind up with a wrong answer because those are not corresponding sides, okay? We have to make sure that we have the corresponding sides set up together in the proportion. Uh, so here I wind up with 15 times x and 45. Then when I solve for x by dividing, I find that x is equal to 3, and my measure was centimeters, so it's 3 centimeters, okay? Uh, so again, I just reiterate, uh, very important to make sure you're putting everything in the right spot. Um, most of the problems I see is not um, with doing this part. Most of you can solve proportions. Um, the big thing is making sure that everything's in the right spot before you go about trying to solve it. So make sure you're taking your time to set it up properly before you try to solve. Uh, if you have any questions, you can email me, you can put them in the comments section, or you can ask uh, in class. Um, and remember, you can always go back, watch any of the videos that you need to to help clarify. Uh, you guys have a great night. I'll see you tomorrow in class.